You, you, sent me, you sent me a really interesting series of questions, and one of them was QRO versus QRP. And years ago, before I entered a CQ Worldwide contest, I looked at the kind of all-time scores to see if was there a category somewhere I could... Former European winner. <laughs> whether it was a category somewhere I could nibble off, right? And I noticed that the 40 metres, 10 watts and under from UK, I thought, oh, I'll, nobody's going to enter that. Well, somebody had, and he had done huge score because he had borrowed a big station right at 10 watts so then i got got me thinking what is the difference between qrp a serious qrp operator doesn't mean do you remember the 817 or whatever it was yeah. the little yesu thing yeah. i remember going, yeah. i remember going to a field day and there was a guy on one of these and he had like 30 meters of the crappiest rg58 and some contraption with a tripod and coils and <laughs> things sticking out of it right <laughs> And he spent all day and he didn't make one contact, right? And I thought to myself, if he had a just, if he's serious, if it's because I appreciate paranoia and uh, people who really enjoy, you know, that last little bit of detail. If he'd used, you know, let's be ridiculous now, you know, 10 feet of, um, you know, Messi and Poloni, you know, high quality thing. And he'd put, um, you know, he had a, uh, a um, a painter's pole from B and Q or Home Depot, right? And a dye pole across the top. His five watts, he would have probably run quite well, you know. Particularly because you you know on a Saturday, you hear people calling, you know, M zero A B C stroke portable C Q C Q. Oh, they're putting a show on, aren't they? So we'll give them a go, right? And they have a bit of a pile up because you know they've made an effort. And this guy couldn't make head or tail of anything and it was it was all and he'd spent like two or three hundred pounds on this thing all shiny and coils and bits coming off it and everything and just bloody pointless you could you could put a fan dipole and a painter's yeah pole yeah. you can get uh 40 20 and 15 off that easy at a one-to-one -one, you know yeah. swr negligible yeah. Short runner coax with your 10 watts, you do fine. Now, Tom, M0RMY, he took, okay, DX command. I'm sure there's other people have done this with other products. But he took the expedition pole and he walked around the Isle of Arran, 70 miles. And every day he'd stop about three or four o'clock because he's an early riser. Oh, hold on, hold on, take a pause. So he's, he's carrying all his gear. Yeah. So he hasn't been dropped off by a taxi. No, 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 no. He's actually got a hike. That's pocket. That's fantastic. There's a video. We'll put a link in oh, the description. Oh, oh, yeah. He walked around the Isle of Arran with his expedition pole, right? And every every evening, three, four o'clock, because he, you know, he would do like 15 miles, you know. He'd put it up, get his, it was the Icom 705. Yeah. yeah. Is that five or yeah, ten? Right, got, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, he was all over the world with this, right? He couldn't believe it. Now, and, and, it, and it took him 10 minutes on average. He says this on the video. It, it, it took him on average about 10 minutes to put it up. Now, if you're tired and everybody else, maybe you prefer two minutes. But it's not going to work very well. Yeah. There's the amount of effort you put in. I mean, what do you want out yeah, of your radio? What you're doing is you're spending 10 minutes longer to set up, but probably saving you half an hour to an hour if in contacts. Let's say you're going uh, down okay, you go. Okay, you could look at that one. Yeah, 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 because you give you. I'll, I'll chuck a wire up a tree. I'll use my AH705 little automatic tuner from Icons and do the same time. Process the radio. Uh, I'll press my button. I'll tune it in. I'll put a few CQs there. It will take me a while to get my contacts. By which t which time, with something more efficient. You could have gone spent 10 minutes longer up front. That's right. Get your 10 activations, you pack up again, you're off to the pole. Yeah. Or you just make higher quality contacts instead of being S3, they're S7. Yeah. It just feels better, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's also on parks on the air. There's the competitive side as well, which is an all office. Yeah. Because you go, oh, the bloke who's been here before and activated it, okay. he got 14 contacts. So I got 45. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's that sort of thing. Yeah. So, and it's just, so when I look at an antenna now, because I've been doing this so many years, 
I, I look at antenna and I go, I know what that's going to do. So if you could put your RF glasses on, <laughs> you could see the pattern. I bet you can get those in LA Express. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me a pair, actually. They don't work. So on 40 metres, you know, you don't need the height. You know, fence height. You know, just fence height. Hedge height, you know, tree branch height. Yeah. So if you're just going to do 40, I don't understand why you need contraptions when you can make a little dipole centre out of a little bit of wood, you know, epoxy it or whatever else, and a uh, nice bit of wire, short runner coax. You could hook it over a branch to that height and a couple of bits of little paracord, although paracord in foliage and everything is a nightmare, but anyway, just throw it over. And um, people would be surprised. All of a sudden, they're like two, three, four S points louder because it's just so efficient. You've got coils and yeah, yeah. everything, and cheap, shitty coax. Yeah, yeah. Make a just think about your signal chain. I'm coming out. I've got the power of the radio. How do I get that into the air the most efficient possible? You know, versus the amount of weight versus the hassle. You know, so there is a trade-off everywhere. You know, you could, you could, you know, take a portable Yagi, but it'd be a bloody nightmare, wouldn't it? But you'd be an hour setting up, you know, and as some telescopic thing, and <laughs> you know, and guy wires, and you're hammering things in. I bet someone has done it. Yeah. You just want it easy. Now, for the drive, the there's a lot of people who drive somewhere. They don't want to walk up a mountain. They just want to get out of the car and put the aerial up. Yeah. Them. So, a bit of a sales thing here, but <coughs> that's why I did the Venture. All oh, right, okay, that's what the, I... the Venture is the patio umbrella stand. Yeah. You put that down, you put a pole in, you stick your antenna over the top, and then about four or five minutes later, you're on, um, you're on the air. <laughs>